The spread with the Louisville game is 10 and a half over Wichita State. Yeah, it's open to 10 and a half. It's, it's stayed there. So what do you think? I'm still going to take Louisville. Um, I, I don't think that, uh, that Wichita State can... I don't think Wichita State has the offense to handle that sort of aggressive uh, in-your-face defense that Louisville plays. And right now they're playing at such a high level. Um, and I don't think they have the quickness for it. Um, so I think they're, this magical run of Wichita State ends here, and I think it could end big. I think it could end in a 20-point loss. If they could slow down Louisville in transition, and they could hold Russ Smith, if Malcolm Armstead can play really good defense on Russ Smith, I think they have a chance to beat the spread. I don't know if they'll actually beat Louisville. I think Louisville goes to the national championship game. Not easy, but I think they'll go. Uh, well, there's a, the there's big a, question there's is, can, one, they, can, they hold down, can they hold Louisville in transition and not let them get out on the run well, with Peyton Siva and Russ Smith? As always, if they hit all the ifs, they can. The key to this is if they you know, hit 11 out of 18 three-pointers, they can hang in the game. They can control the pace of the game. Hard to hit those three-pointers against Louisville. That, that their defense can play interior, and it, it, it extends. So I, I, just, I doubt it. I mean, we just, they just beat Duke by 20. Uh, my hunch is they're going to handle Wichita State um, because they're playing at such an enormously high level. Um, you get them on a bad day, it just doesn't seem like they're about to have a bad day. It doesn't yeah. feel like we're about to experience a bad day for Louisville. But Wichita State's good. They, any, look, once you've reached this level, you make your shots, you can win a game. Because then you make your shots, you don't have to worry about stopping a team in transition. Uh, all of a sudden, you've you got to How well do they have to shoot, Ben? I mean, they got to hit more than half their threes. They got to have one of those days. Where they got to do, I can't believe I'm going to make my second reference to the women's game, but they got to do what the Louisville women did against Baylor 16 out of 25 threes. That's extreme. But, you know, you hit 10 out of 18, you, make, you, you hit your threes because then the worst thing you can do in basketball is take threes and miss them against a good team because then they get out and run. Yep. Um, but you hit 10, 11, Which goes out to the 18. point that I was saying. Right. We're trying but, to slow them down in transition. But if you hit them, not only do you get the points, but you instinct, you, you automatically slow them down. You can set your defense. But Which, I think Louisville wins that game by, by more than 10 and a half your points. Your point brings up my next one with how exactly is Wichita State going to score in the paint? Because with Gorgie Jang, the way that he played against Duke, the way that he's played this tournament, he's not letting anyone score easily. I mean, he's blocking shots like crazy. His length is very troubling for a lot of offenses. And not only that, he's actually hitting jump shots. He's hitting those free throw line extended jump shots, which you don't expect to see from a seven-footer like that. Louisville doesn't really have a flaw. You know, Ohio State had a flaw. They're not the most athletic team. Uh, and they're a poor rebounding team. Right. Louisville doesn't have a flaw. There are, they, the fact, they obviously lost games this year. They can have games where they don't do things well, and that's when they lose. So can Wichita State win? Yeah, they can win. Things could go wrong. Louisville can But you don't the think they'll beat the spread? I don't think they'll beat the spread. I think Louisville is just playing at such a high level that there's some chance that, they, that this is what happens like when Penn made the Final Four in 1979, that you lose to Magic Johnson's team by 32 points. Like, it wouldn't surprise me if this Which game, I really hope does not happen. 85 to 60 wouldn't surprise me. That said, look, I'm not real confident about 10.5 points. It's a lot of points. Yeah. And you can backdoor cover it there for Wichita State at 10.5. But like, like Oregon did. I mean, Louisville dominated that game, but they were also a 10-point or 10.5-point favorite against Oregon. Oregon ends up covering. And Oregon went on a fantastic run. But they were never in too. the game. But the game was never in doubt. And that could conceivably happen against Wichita State. Game's never in doubt. Pretty sure they got it down to like five points in that game. No one for a second thought Oregon was coming back. What do you mean? They were down like 20, and then they got it down to five. Yeah, Rick. I mean, that's really not a fair point to say. What's wrong with Rick? Um, the... Uh, the, uh, no, no, I got it. When I say no one thought it, I don't mean actually, literally, no one thought no, it. No, but I know that you I was watching it. the game, and there was never a moment where I thought, uh-oh, Oregon's going to catch him. They get it down to, I think they got it to six. You're like, oh, look at that. But I never thought, Louisville was always in control of that game. You know, Oregon made a run. By the way, as soon as they got it down, it was back up quickly. No. They never, it, it never sensed that that game was really actively turning. Just Oregon started making some shots. Louisville didn't. That could happen. No question. Wichita State could cover. I think the smart money uh, uh, goes to Louisville. I think they win easy. A second game. I'm really curious to hear who you have because I actually may bet you on this. Michigan is a two and a half point favorite over Syracuse. Yeah, I don't really understand that line. I think okay. Michigan is a, 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 that uh, this game to me should be a, about a pick 'em game. You know, I could see you giving a half point either way, really. But uh, I could see Syracuse getting a half point, maybe one point. Um, you know, Michigan's got the best player in the tournament. So that matters a lot, and it's the best player at the most important position at this stage of the tournament. That's why they're favored, I'm sure. Uh, but that said, they, I don't think they've earned two and a half points. I, I would probably make Michigan a slight favorite, but not two and a half. So I would take, uh, um, I would take Syracuse in that game. You would take Syracuse? Yeah, okay. I did, I did yeah, take I would Syracuse. Too. Yeah. I do not think any Big Ten team can compete with Syracuse's zone. And I understand that everyone, everyone likes to throw out these, 
these cliches about Jim Beheim's zone, like, oh, that, that is what it is. That's, you know, that's their key. But, like, it is. They have, six foot, they have a 6'4 Brandon Trish, a 6'6 six six Michael Carter Williams at the top of the zone. And then you don't even, not to leave out James Sutherland, and he got a few others down there. You know, uh, C.J. Fair is a fantastic swing player for them. Really, really tough to match up against them. I don't see uh, Stauskas getting off the way he did because, you know, if they, if they wind Sutherland out on Stauskas, granted he could run the baseline either way, C.J. Fair and Sutherland are going to close out on him. Stauskas is big, though. He could be bigger. James Sutherland is a good 6'9", 6 6'10". 6 yeah, just... Stauskas could be a, six, what, 6'4"? Six, Look, Louisville's lost games this year. First of all, the way they lose Syracuse. games. Syracuse. Syracuse has lost games this year, and the way they lose games uh, is they can't score. One of the ways they lose games is they struggle to score. So uh, that's in a whole other area of this game. Will Michigan struggle? I think Michigan's more likely to win this game if it's a fairly low-scoring game, if a game's kept in the 60s. Well, that's a Big think, Ten game. Uh, yeah. That they have a better shot. But Michigan's got playmakers, and, and playmakers can, no matter how great that zone is, can beat them. Syracuse is not a perfect team. Syracuse is not Louisville. They're playing at a very high level. But no, when you got a point guard like, like Burke, and shooters around him. And Hardaway, I think, for Michigan to win has to shoot well. You've got to get one of those guys, Stauskas or Hardaway, to shoot. Well, it has to be, it has to be both, actually. Uh, right, <laughs> but somebody at least needs to be making shots to enable... Well, you can't to expect Stauskas to go six for six again. The, the, the thing, three. we talked about this before, when you penetrate against a great zone like that in a zone that's really long, it, the, you know, you, all these teams that have shooters and a great point guard, they want to drive and dish. That's how, that's like basically the way, the only successful way basketball is played. Now. Yeah. Um, uh, it's really hard to do against the Syracuse zone because they're so long. They're all so long. But here's who can do it, Trey Burke, when you have a guy that good. Um, so I, I just that's why they're favored. Um, and that's why Syrac if, if there's a team to me that can sort of is capable of beating Syracuse's zone, it's a team with shooters and a great point guard, and that's Michigan.